Hello and welcome to Silux, the podcast where we talk about scientific developments and technological changes in Luxembourg. And in today's episode, we have a look at tackling learning disabilities in multilingual contexts in Luxembourg. Then we will talk about the Journal of Digital History, started at the University of Luxembourg. And at the very end, I will tell you a little bit about elements of AI course. But first, as usual, it's time for the pub quiz. I guess by now you are very familiar with the procedure, but for those of you who join us for the first time, I will explain. This is the part of the podcast where I give you one pub quiz style question and the solution to the question is at the very end of the podcast. Today's question is, what is Science Mobile and where is it placed right now? And now going back to the subjects of today's podcast. When I was preparing for the podcast today, I tried to find a common theme of all the subjects I wanted to tell you about. I would venture to say that today it's a little bit about research and education or some layers of it. And first of all, there is a new handbook about learning disabilities in multilingual contexts. And this made me think of the recent viral video of a Luxembourgish journalist that speaks six languages. Does it impress us here? I guess most of us will say no, but still, way to go. It's always great that our country gets promoted like this. In case you haven't seen it, uh, the journalist is called Philip Crowther. And I will share the link to his video in the show notes. As usual, all the links will be there in case you haven't heard exactly the name or want to read a little bit more. But coming back to the handbook, when we talk in Luxembourg about education, we definitely need to talk about the different advantages and disadvantages of certain groups when it comes to language. And it turns out that up until now, most of the tests that were used in the educational context for learning disabilities were actually in German. So they were coming from the German-speaking countries, which meant that sometimes... You could not really diagnose the learning disability. You would rather diagnose the language problem. And now we've come to the conclusion that it would be really great to develop different tests and have different scenarios for the teachers to use. And as a result of a collaboration between the University of Luxembourg and the Centre pour le développement des apprentissages Grand Duchesse Maria Theresa, CDA, we got this uh, first layer of... Uh, study, which is this handbook, as I mentioned. This handbook talks more about the current state of affairs, gives certain ideas concerning possible pedagogic and didactic support and ad adaptive tools, but it does not give us a source of, of uh, tests. This will come later, so this will be the second step of this uh, handbook. I guess a very good Uh, addition to all the textbooks available to teachers and I'm very happy that this is slowly becoming a standard rather than an exception. And the second subject is the Journal of Digital History, so a new open access journal which is an initiative of the Luxembourg Center for Contemporary and Digital History at the University of Luxembourg and the, the Greater Publishing Group. So first of all, uh, I haven't had the chance to talk about the center yet. I already mentioned to you a couple of times LCSB. We also talked about SNT. And this is the third center that is interdisciplinary at the University of Luxembourg. And I love their name. Their name is C squared DH. Well, Center for Contemporary and Digital History. Makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, when it comes to the journal that I wanted to tell you about, this is a new initiative. Uh, as I mentioned, it's open access. So it made me read a little bit more about the current state of affairs when it comes to open access journals. Oh my, there is a lot going on. And of course, a lot of controversy as well. 
I don't want to delve into that. If you want to read more, I will try to share some links about different uh, ideas on whether the scientists should publish non-open access, open access. I'm sure all of you listening have their own ideas about copyrights and paying for being published or not paying or access to the new scientists or not. Well, anyway, this one is, as I mentioned, open access. And the idea is to have three different layers for the publication. So there'll be the narration layer, which is supposed to involve transmedia storytelling. So different media to tell the story. There'll be the hermeneutic layer and that will explore more the methodology and then the data layer so we can hope for access to the code and data used in the research and that sounds very interesting. I will only give my opinion about it once I see it. I just hope that it will be popular enough for us normal human beings and not scientists to to have a look at those different uh, transmedia storytelling layers and and maybe some data out of it. So hopefully there'll be something that we can take out of it and not only the researchers, which of course is also great for the researchers, but I'm always hoping for something, some uh, popular science uh, layer to such journals. And now we go to the far north of Europe, or rather to the University of Helsinki, which developed this course called Elements of AI, together with a company called Reactor. And this course is now coming to Luxembourg. It will be translated into three languages, English, German and French, and adapted to the specificities of our country. What is it about? Uh, First of all, it was developed during the Finnish presidency of the Council of the European Union in 2019. And the idea was that the presidency was trying to promote more advancement when it comes to the knowledge of artificial intelligence and education of citizens when it comes to this uh, very important and and potent, as well as a bit trendy nowadays word. And what they did is they uh, first launched it in their country, and then now it's coming to other countries, and as I mentioned, also to Luxembourg. In our country, this also involves uh, support from other important institutions. There is University of Luxembourg involved, and this course will have a special weekly interactive webinars uh, developed by the university and some exercises. So there will be the support coming from the University of Luxembourg. There'll be also something coming from the University of Luxembourg's Competence Centre. Uh, we can also hope for the involvement of INAP, so the National Academy for Civil Servants. Quite a lot of different players And all this is leading simply to the fact that once you decide to participate in this course, you can hope for a special certificate, a special recognition in the country of Luxembourg. Who is it aimed at? Of course, anybody, that's the idea, but mainly this will be students, uh, civil servants, as well as professionals from different sectors. So if you don't know anything about AI, you have always been interested, you don't have programming knowledge or very developed mathematical skills, this course will be for you. In case you're interested, you can go to their website. It seems the course should be launched in February. The website is elementsofai.lu, that is E-L-E-M-E-N-T-S-O-F. AI.lu. Of course, as I mentioned, I will also share this link in the show notes. To finish off, interesting fact I found on the website, 580,000 students have signed so far for the course from 170 countries. So this I found quite interesting and important to know. And then there was the third fact that 40% of course participants are women. And this seems to be the double of the usual participants when it comes to computer science courses. And to be honest, I started wondering, why is this fact there? Maybe you know? Once again, if you're interested, 
wait a little bit, sign up. They will inform you soon about the course and it will be all certified and accredited in Luxembourg. And we've come to the almost end of today's show, which means that now I have to give you the solution to the pub quiz. So today's question was, what is Science Mobile and where is it currently? Where is it placed? In case you are following me on Twitter, you probably noticed that I got excited about it a couple of days ago. The Science Mobile is an initiative by the National Museum of Natural History in Luxembourg. It is eventually a lorry with a trailer that can be transformed into an exhibition space. And it goes from school to school promoting science. So you can imagine it as a huge food truck. Yeah, it's a lorry uh, that serves scientists instead of burgers or um, french fries. Anyway, I really like this idea and I was very excited about it because I thought, oh, that's so great for COVID times. And then I realized that it's been going on for so many years. So it's been there for quite some time. And uh, it seems that uh, the subjects, the themes change. So there are certain ones that keep repeating themselves. There are certain ones that are new. The scientists talk about light. There are quite a lot of programs about light, uh, pigments, color, uh, in the shadow uh, subject. Um, a couple of years ago, there was one called Alles Anischt Wei Banal, so something about the everyday objects and their use... Uh, well, maybe under a microscope to see how they look uh, and some other things. So really, really nice, popular science initiative. In case you want to know where it is right now, you can find it in front of the school Amzand um, in Oberanven. Uh, and I'm sure it will be moving around uh, and you can check uh, more information about it on their website. I will also share the link in the show notes. <laughs> And as you can see, it does make sense to check the Silux Twitter account once in a while. This way you had the answer to the pub quiz question. So, of course, if you still don't follow us on Twitter, do it right now. Check out the Facebook page, LinkedIn page, write, comment, tell me what you think about the show, about Silux. Uh, do you have any suggestions for next episodes? I'm always happy to to read it and to react to your comments. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, today's uh, show. Thank you for listening and hope you'll be here again soon. Remember, a new episode is published uh, every second Monday of the month. Once again, thank you. This was Silux and my name is Hanna Szymaszko. Mm-hmm.